Hey you guys, in this video we're going to talk about how I painted the chocolate point Siamese cat, the darker Siamese cat, and I will go over everything from how I kept the fur off to how I had to change his head a little bit because the client wanted his head shaped a little differently, and I will go over everything that I did to create this chocolate point Siamese. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I have my painting a little bit damp, not a lot damp, but just enough to keep everything soft. And what I'm going to do first, I think, is to block in the nose. And it is hard to see the nose even in my reference photo, so I'm going to lighten it in Photoshop just so I can see what the heck I'm doing. Um, and I'm trying to figure out where this eye is. Even on my drawing, it's confusing. <laughs> but I think it's right here. This is supposed to be the eye. Let's block that eye in so it does not get lost. That's the eye. I'm gonna block in the nostrils because those will totally get lost. And I'm gonna use um, just a very, very dark mix off my um, palette. Let's see if this paint, the, the paper is already dry enough for me to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and just put in his nostril so it doesn't get lost. And then this area, is like a lighter black, blue black, top of his nose. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in so that I don't get it lost. It's still quite dark. Get my water in my brush. And let me just feather the rest of this out. almost like a light gray line right along here and some light areas so I'm gonna block those in so I don't lose them there's some interesting gradations going on in this nose it's not simple when you really look at it and look I like that dry brush effect there kind of makes it look like fur Then I'm gonna go in with some darker. That's how it is in the reference photo too. And just get, get a lot more painterly effects. The more you can get done while your paper is wet. This part of his nose is also a gray. So I'm just blocking that in so I don't lose it later. Then I'm going to let that dry and I'll work on this ear. And then I'm going to go in with clear water and just re wet some areas. got a bunch of white hairs in the middle of his ear so I'm going to be careful to paint the clear water around that because I'm going to work towards keeping that white and then all this in here is kind of a pinkish brown where the skin of his ears show up and I want to work fairly quickly so I'm going to get some burnt sienna with some naphthol red and some more naphthol red I want to keep it brown pink. It's like a brown pink color in his ears, the way I'm reading it. 
so I like to combine burnt sienna with naphthol red keep all this kind of loose in here to capture this hairy area Right, and then there's almost pure black around this part of his ear. Look how much more interesting this wash is because I'm working in wet paint. It just makes it look a lot more painterly, a lot more natural, a lot less stilted when you work with wet paint. Look how pretty that looks. I'm going in with some clear water to loosen this area up a little bit. And then I'm trying to work around my camera so you guys can see what I'm doing, but I need to see what I'm doing too. <laughs> It is a little tricky, but I will do my best here. And I'm just trying to work quickly so that I preserve. Okay, there's a little pink area in here. Kind of talking my way through all this. It's more brown than pink, but it's okay. I'm gonna put some more naphthol in there. And then I'll go in and I'll block in my darks, which are right along the edge. I know that much. Look how that paint is kind of painting itself. Love that about watercolor. I really do. And then there's a little notch in his ear here. Let's put that in. On the side of his the hair over here. Now this is a nice hard edge in here. There's a little curve. And then it goes up. This area is grayer. I'm just looking very, very closely at my reference photo. Looking back frequently. Oops, I got a puddle of water in there. That's okay. I'll I'll keep working on it. And there's a big dark area here. Is that a, it's kind of a cool dark area. So I can just, boom, fill that all in. I'm trying to work very quickly, you guys, to capture all the little sweet nuances in this guy's ear, but keeping it fresh. And this is where his hairs come in. this hair is still kind of still moist so putting in some of these hair details and towards the base of his ear where the fur comes it's darker because I guess because his ear gets deeper I don't know but I do want to try to capture that and in here is pretty dark And then there's this light area here. And then there's a... I feel like I could do ASMR, like... <laughs> Have you guys heard about the ASMR craze on, face on YouTube? Look it up. 
It's where people go and watch videos of other people whispering. I don't get it. But if you like listening to my videos and you get a little sleepy listening to my voice kind of half whisper because I'm kind of talking to myself, but I'm also kind of talking to you guys. <laughs> That's ASMR. Oops, what did I do there? That's okay. All right, I'm going to let that rest. I'm going to let that think. I'm going to let my brain think about that. And I'm going to look at it from afar, make sure I got the shapes right. But I'm going to re-wet this whole area, being careful around this kitty's ears. Not worried about touching a little bit into these areas that I just did on the ears. This is all dry, so I can totally re-wet that, that area and it will not hurt it. I don't know what that is. I'm going to have to fix that. But now I can just go in and have a little bit of fun with the fur and just maybe do a light, just a fun after doing that detailed ear where I was, my smoke was coming out of my brain because I was really concentrating on all the little tiny shapes. But this is mostly burnt sienna and ultramarine blue anyway in this mix. And that's what I like to use for my fur textures. This cat has some very delicate fur areas. It's just a light cream. So I'm gonna get some more burnt sienna on my brush. This is my Alvero Castagnet brush that I'm using mostly. I can go in and see how wet my paper is right now. I'm gonna get a, sh a long shape with my brush kind of like a wedge so I can make some fur textures in here. There's a lot of brown through here. I'm gonna splay my brush a bit. And I'm just I'm going to pick up a little bit of areolin to warm this up and some more burnt sienna. Mm. Shake out the excess because this area over here is a little bit more warm colored. And then as it gets down in the shadow, it gets cooler. So let me pick up some ultramarine blue off my palette. And then this area has a lot of ultramarine blue, a lot of cooler colors over here. Cause I guess this is his leg area over here. And textures in here. I think I want to use my liner brush for some of these textures just to get a lighter touch here. This is my Simply Simmons size zero liner. You can also use this side of your brush and scrub like this, almost like your um, the handle of your brush is parallel, not perpendicular, parallel to the paper and you use the side and you can get some good textures that way using the side of the bristles of your brush. Almost like a scrubbing action. See, I'm now I'm painting on almost dry paper over here, and it'll be a good underlayer for the fur textures. Now here, the light's really hitting him, and he doesn't have a lot of the 
coloration in his coat up here, but along here he does, where there's a shadow, because this part of his body is receding into the shadow, so this is darker. I'm using the side of my brush. Um, and you can see the paper is somewhat dry in part and somewhat moist in part. And that just lends to some in interesting textures. Okay, I'm almost at the ear. I want to paint carefully around this ear of the other cat. So, and you can take your finger and just kind of texture it out. You just pull the paint out. You see how that kind of made an interesting edge, too. That's another good way to make an interesting edge. And then where his arm comes up, he's got, let's block that whole line in, because this line under his leg goes up, up, up. And get some darker colors to create this line that goes all the way up his body to his elbow and then it starts kind of going up like that the moisture in my paper is almost perfect it's very close to being dry but it's moist enough that I'm able to get these Fur textures but they're soft it's just lovely it's a lovely time but you gotta work fast because it's quite fleeting but look how pretty those little textures are right now and at some point that's just so pretty right there it's just so perfect yeah too brown too blue I mean ah. <laughs> My ultramarine blue on my brush. I don't want that area to be so cool. I need to get more quinacridone gold on my palette. I'm kind of missing it. I'm having to use my Oriole, and it's just not quite the same gold color. And I kind of miss it right right here. Now I can get more burnt sienna, more ultramarine blue on my brush to go back into these areas now that they're a little bit drier. Define them more. You see how I'm using the edge of my brush here a lot? to create these textures, textures. That keeps it a lot more dynamic looking. <clears throat> so you don't have tilted, painted on looking areas. You don't want, ah, I dropped my brush. Right. I want to get a lot of color on my brush for this stage because there is a line of shadow and the paint, the paper is just such a perfect amount of wet right in here that I can create this shadow that is created because it's between his, the fold of his leg and his belly is here and his leg is here and it's really quite lovely little shadow and it's quite a lovely time to paint that shadow because the paper is still wet. And I get like a cream consistency paint in my brush right now to keep this pretty dark. So you can see 
and it feathers out just beautifully as the water moves because it is so wet in this area for whatever reason. Luck uh, just creates the most pretty textures all by itself. It paints watercolor by itself. There's a guy who has called his YouTube channel the Mind of Watercolor and I believe I remember him saying the reason he picked that name is because watercolor does have a mind of its own and especially if you use a lot of water and right now I'm just putting another layer of dark color on the eye just to make sure it is as dark as I can possibly get it because I do want that to be a highlight of this cat's face so I just wanted to really bring some more emphasis to it and then I moistened this area lightly so it's damp but not too damp not not wet I would say damp and I'm going in with cream consistency paint. So you see, I'm starting with my darks here. And the reason I'm doing that, I'm thinking what I will do is put these darks in and then later on, I'll go over it with lighter tea consistency washes to continue to build up the colors in his face. And that will continue to soften this first layer of cream consistency paint. And thick paint does tend to soften a little bit when you wash over it again after it's dried so that can be a good way to soften areas is to go back in over them with wet paint after they've completely dried you have to let them completely dry and then go back in and soften over them so sometimes I do block in dark areas one so that I can map out where they are so I don't get lost in the painting later and two so that I can go back in over them and wash over them with clear water to soften them further. And here you can see I'm using my Simply Simmons brush to um, get some textures and it's almost dry. The paper is almost dry so I'm able to use the side of my brush to get some fine little details and it makes it look like it's soft little hair or short little fur hairs which are typical on the face. Of course, the, the hair on the face is shorter. So if you use the side of your brush on an almost dry paper, it will create these little fur textures of very short fur. So my mix right here is burnt sienna and ultramarine blue as usual with more blue in the mix than burnt sienna to make it this blacker, cooler color. And I'm just very carefully looking back and forth between my reference photo and my painting so that I get all the little nuances in this area really accurate because, again, this cat's eyes are closed so they cannot do the work for me of drawing the viewer's eye away from all the other areas of the face where I could usually put less detail uh, because I know that the viewers I won't be really looking at other areas they'll be looking at those beautiful eyes but since this cat doesn't have any open eyes to look at I need to give the viewer something else interesting to look at so that's why I put a lot more attention and focus in the details like the ears and this face area and the tiny little hairs in the in the face I'm putting more emphasis on those areas than I normally do on most cats because the eyes are closed. So you have to make something the star of the show. So the eyes can't be the star of the show for this particular cat, for the black cat they could be, but for this particular cat it's got to be those little details I like to call jewelry, like whiskers and little tiny furs on the face and the little contours and folds in the ears and things like that. So uh, the eyes usually do all that work for me and that can make it a lot easier to paint a cat when you can rely on the eye to do that work and now I'm going in with see now I have clear water there that I'm going in over the light areas of the nose and merging it into those darker tea consistency to milk consistency 
passages that I put in. Actually, those are more cream consistency and milk consistency. And then I put clear water on the lightest area of the nose so that it all kind of merges together and stays soft. But that one light part of the nostril retains its lightness. So I'm making sure I'm getting all the different values. I'm getting my super darks, my super lights, and my medium tones. And this cat had a shadow along the top line of his nose. So I'm making sure that that, wa that paper is wet when I put in this little dark edge because I want it to all melt down together. I don't want it to be a hard dark line of black along the top line of his nose. I want it to merge down into the rest of the side of his nose. So it's kind of a gradated change in value. And again, I'm using my Simply Simmons because I want to do really, really focused detail. And here, I, he's the hairs are getting longer, so I make those lawn strokes, and then I'm changing. This is another example of what I would call mapping out. I'm putting in that dark line that shows the edge of the bottom of his face and the top of his shoulder. And that's an important line, so I go ahead and map that in so I make sure I have that and I can use it as reference for where I need to put everything else. And I'm using cream consistency paint to put in that dark line. And it does look harsh right now, but you will see later when I go in and I put a larger wash over this entire cat, it softens everything out and balances everything out so it's not so contrasty. But for a while there, this painting definitely goes through an ugly stage where there's a lot of contrast in the lines of this cat's face because I had mapped it all out. You'll see how that builds over the development of this painting. But I do that again to provide myself a map so I know where I am in space on my painting in the cat's face or on a shoulder or wherever I am so that I can use those points of reference to measure. Okay, this point of the chin is this much more distant from this point of the fold of his mouth or whatever. You can use those little points as measuring reference points when you put in the rest of the details of the cat. Now for the areas where the whiskers go into the cat's face, those little dots on his cheek area, I guess you call it under the nose, and for most cats, those look really bad if you do them dry on dry, if you paint them onto dry paper. They need to be really soft, so always moisten your paper when you're doing this area, almost always because those are soft little dots of darker color to show where the whiskers grow into the side of the cat's face. So I always work in this area particularly, I think it's important to work on damp paper. And sometimes when you're working with damp paper, you have to get it damp and then keep doing little tiny tests by dotting down some paint, seeing how much it spreads. If it spreads too much, you have to wait. You can even blot up a little bit if it's really, really too wet, or you can just wait it out and let it dry naturally for a more even amount of dampness across the whole piece of paper. But do little tests and make sure your paper is the right amount of dampness for how much control you need in an area. And for like this small little area, I needed quite a bit of control, so it needs to be less damp. In larger areas, when I do his body, you'll see, it can be quite, it can be almost glistening wet when I do the larger contours of the whole body. And now I'm continuing to work out into the face, feathering out. Some of my strokes can be longer because the little rivulets of fur get longer. Just make sure, it's like a cat's fur has rivulets in it. 
just like water would, and you just have to follow the line of those rivers of fur. Follow the currents with your brush strokes. And here my paper is a little bit more dry and you can see the fur under his eye has a lot of texture in it. So I was allowing my paper to dry out more right there so that it captures the look of fur having a little bit of light glint off of it. And when it got too harsh of an edge, you can see I dot it with my finger. And again, as I've said several times already, I know I'll be going back over this with another darker, well not darker, actually a tea consistency wash. So these darker areas will show through my next layer I'll put on later of tea consistency paint, but it'll soften it all out, but still retain some texture. So it's like I'm doing an underpainting right now. And that's a very common practice across painting disciplines. You do an underlayer first to provide the support and framework of consecutive layers of paint following the layers of paint you'll put on later. So you can make these pretty textured if you want. I'm painting with tea consistency in my brush and dry paper. In all these areas, his fur is a little bit cooler, as in more closer to the bluer or blacker looking colors and less towards the orange brownish colors. So I added a little bit more ultramarine blue in my mix when I was mixing it on my palette. And again, you can see I'm using long strokes to get those upper eye strokes in. Um, oops, I don't want that. I want burnt sienna. You can see my palette, how messy it is, and you can see when you're painting a cat this color, you can use all that mess. I mean, you don't even have to go into the wells of your uh, palette. You can just use all the color that's already on your palette from previous washes. So it saves a lot of paint, and it doesn't take a lot of paint to paint these delicate little layers, especially all this tea consistency work, takes hardly any paint at all. Now I'm using my size six round Princeton brush. I'm working in a little bit larger area and I'm just continuing to build up the contours of the face. I still consider this the time when I'm mapping in all the details because this cat did have a lot of different little lines and shadings in his face and I didn't want to lose that bigger picture when I got into the trenches of the more detail later. And right here my paper is really wet just to keep all these contours really soft. Right now though they do look scary don't they? They look like <laughs> they really uh, don't have a lot of softness to them but this is serving as my map and I'll go in later and kind of soften everything down more later. His nose did look wonky here and part of the problem was all of that area was in shadow and even when I lightened it up a lot in Photoshop I still couldn't see a lot like I, it was hard for me to tell where the nose ended so I had to play with it a lot and then later after I was happy with it <laughs> the client came back and said it didn't look like the right cat and then she sent me a new picture that looked like a totally different cat so I had to change it again so the nose on this cat gave me a little bit of headache because I had to keep adjusting it until I was happy with it and luckily I had used granulating paints that were easy to kind of erase and and repaint and move around after they had dried. So you can see how I'm using my palette. I'm really scrubbing a lot of paint into my brush and there's not a lot of water on my palette. One technique that I love to do is when the paper is really wet and things are really still spreading, I love to go in I don't want that there, with like cream consistency paint and drop it in and just let it do its thing and it's just I think it's such a pretty effect. 
This is a really nice time to get some soft fur textures done. Now, this is bleeding over into a lighter area that I want to kind of protect, so I'm going to put some clear water to push it back. You guys know this technique well if you've been watching my videos, how if an area is getting too intruded upon, I'll go in with clear water on this side so it pushes back this dark paint here. So that's what I just did. And this area is very cool. So I'm going to drop in a little bit more ultramarine blue to cool it off even more with some cream consistency paint, taking advantage of my paper being wet as much as possible. And just keep adding. Now this is a really nice consistency to work with. I'm getting a tea consistency and just graying down this area, softening it up. I'll actually go in with my whisper brush now and see if I can add some soft. Yeah, see, that's just nice and soft. I'm going in with tea consistency while my paper is still damp, almost dry, but wet enough that it's keeping all this soft. Just right. I don't have much time to get a lot done. I'm going to go in with some drippy water right in here, and then I can come back in and drop in some. I'm just getting some darks off my palette. Oh, it's not even not even worried about exactly what darks I'm using. At this point, I'm just getting in some dark details down here. I want to pretty much get rid of all the white down here because I don't want the eye to travel to this area, but I do want it to look like there's some fur texture in there. So, working as quickly as I can while everything's moist continue to add soft details. This is starting to dry out too much here. And then it's right about here is the really dark area. And this, and look how much my paper's already dried. It's too dry. Too dry, so I'm going to go in and re-moisten. This whole area and I want this a kind of a cup shape if you look at the reference photo so I'm going in with cream consistency paint to get these darks really dark in here I want to moisten this whole area because this whole area is going to be quite dark because it's a shadow I'm going to make this more ultramarine blue in the shadow Lots of shadows in this area. It all just kind of merges together in here. In the reference photo. So I just want to kind of capture that feeling. Of it all kind of merging together. create a shadow down in here. I'm dropping in some cream consistency lamp black while I have my, my paper really wet. 
Then I'm going to go in with my Elvaro casting net brush and just get this whole area in here wet so I can work on it while the rest of this kind of sets and dries. I think what I'll use is my wisp brush careful to get the shapes of this guy's head right and blot with my fingers once in a while to soften what I have put in. I'm going to get T consistency and then blot my brush on a piece of paper. some of these washes are a little bit more delicate. Again, here I'm using my Royal and Langnickel Wisp Brush. If you Google Royal and Langnickel Wisp Brush, you will find it. And I am using a short stroke because I'm on the face, so those hairs are short. So I use a short stroke in the direction of the fur, so I am looking back and forth at my reference photo a lot to see what direction the fur lays in and then using my brush in the same direction with the same length of brush stroke as the, the hair is on the face and I'm just using a light tea consistency mostly burnt sienna tea consistency paint and I might put in a little bit of ultramarine blue to cool it down just a little bit and Usually when I use this technique, I'm working on slightly moist paper and you can work also with dry paper with this technique. You can put down tea consistency brush strokes on dry paper and then have that as your under layer for more layers of softer fur on top. So you can start with some um, dry on dry type under layers of painting, or you can work soft. You can work wet and wet and make your brush strokes more soft. It's kind of up to you how much texture you want. If you want more texture, use drier paper. If you want less texture, more softness, then use more moisture, clear water on your paper before you put down the brush strokes. All right, now I've gotten the painting to a point where I want to remove my masking. So that's what I'm doing here. And to remove my masking, I just scrub it with my fingers. Sometimes if the masking is being stubborn and needs a little bit of extra encouragement to come off the paper, I will use a hard white eraser that doesn't leave any marks behind. And sometimes you have to scrub more than others. If your masking is getting old and it's getting sticky, it might give you a little bit of a fight. And my masking was starting to get old on my last Bengal painting, if you guys remember watching that. But as I remember, the masking was coming off pretty easily off this painting still. I have since gotten new masking, by the way. <laughs> and I've got my Simply Simmons brush, and I am doing some detail work around the whiskers, refining the whiskers. And this is what you would call painting in the negative space. You're painting around the main subject of interest, basically in the air area. So you're painting in between the object. I'm going to work on this ear some more and put some more detail. I've let it sleep overnight, let my mind think about it while I'm resting. That seems to help to start back with fresh eyes the next day for me and I like to do that a lot. So here I'm going in with my Simply Simmons and I'm just adding some very subtle little details of the shading of the fur in the ear and in different areas of the ear just putting in those light to medium tones, now that I have most of my 
super light and super darks and now I'm going back in with some lighter tones to just add some shading and some details and again I'm using my Sim Simply Simmons brush and for these red-ish areas of the ear I use a mix of Burnt Sienna and Naphthol Red. Uh, cadmium Red would probably work for those of you who have different reds. Alizarin Crimson would be really good with a little bit of Ultramarine Blue mixed in and some Burnt Sienna. That would work. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat as far as getting those ear colors correct. And I say this a lot, and I'll just repeat it here, that the color is less important than the value. So as long as you're getting those darks dark and your lights light, you're going to be good. And ears are similar to eyes in that they have very dark areas and very light areas and a lot and usually a lot of medium tones for most ears. So you want to make sure that you're getting that variety of different tones, not tones, tones refers to color, different values, different lights, darks, and mediums in the ear. And here I'm darkening those darks and putting in those fine little lines. And the more refined you can get your ears on a painting like this, this is a a tighter style painting than my loose styles. So if I was doing a really loose painting for an, a more artsy reason and it was just for myself, I wouldn't do all this detail, but this is a commission for a client. So you do want to make sure you get all those details and commissions unless you've made an agreement with the owner that they do just want a more loose style. And just continuing to get those darks, darks. And like I've said many times before, a beautiful dark can be mixed up by mixing burnt sienna with ultramarine blue. You can also use burnt umber with ultramarine blue. Indigo blue and burnt sienna would probably make a really nice dark. There's a lot of different options. Don't get hung up just using just my colors. You can experiment if you've already bought different colors it's okay and now I'm working on those little ear hairs along his under his ear along his forehead with my Simply Simmons and just putting in some shading because those little furs are not all flat white they have some burnt sienna strands in them and again I'm using longer strokes on those little hairs because they're longer so I'm painting in the direction I want the hair to appear to be growing and I'm using longer strokes on these longer hairs. And I'm also using my Simply Simmons to go in and put in a few fur textures, textures here and there on the face. You don't have to put every single hair texture, but you want to put some fur textures here and there on top of your underpainting usually to create the illusion of fur textures and the viewer's mind will fill in the rest. This cat had several lines of darker fur on his face so I was just painting those in. You using a shorter stroke of course because this is the fur on the face and it's a lot shorter and just keep looking back and forth between your reference and the painting because there are a lot of details in this cat's face and you want to make sure they are all in proportion and in the right uh, the right distance from each other and going in the right direction and having the right curve at the right place so it's a lot to look at and by now, your under drawing is long gone, probably. So you do need to rely heavily on those drawing skills. I had lost the footage where I darkened the cat's face. I believe this is my size 4 round Princeton brush that I'm going in with, with some cream consistency paint into a wet, pre-wetted area. 
So I put clear water down because I knew I wanted all this soft. And I was just putting in more values and making this a more medium color on a, the, a larger section of his face. And I'm just adding some dark markings using cream consistency paint in my paintbrush, Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine Blue. You could use Burnt Umber and Ultramarine Blue, or another blue would work too, probably an Anandrine or Indigo with a Burnt Umber or Burnt Sienna. Any of those mixes would create this fur color. I realized when I thought I had this cat done that overall he needed to be a couple shades darker. So I went in over the whole cat and over all the fur textures I'd painted and put in a little bit darker wash. And I did this on his face too. And I can't seem to find the footage of that one little part that I did, but it's very simple. Uh, I just went in with my large Alero Castagnet brush and washed over the entire cat for the most part with more burnt sienna. And here I'm going in with my larger brush now, about a size four round, and adding some darker values to the fur coat. Right about at this stage, I thought this painting was getting really close to done, so I sent it to the owner and she said that it didn't look like the cat. And then she sent me a different picture of the same cat and it looked like a completely different cat. So I'll show you guys a little bit about what I did to fix this painting. And what I did was I planned to make the forehead more round so that it would have a more I don't know, rounded look. <laughs> but uh, what I did was I just did some very delicate scrubbing along the top line of his forehead. And then I added more forehead, like what you see me doing here, to make it look more rounded. And then I'll go in and darken it even more. But here I'm just using my scrubber and I'm being very delicate with my scrubber because I know I'm going to want to go back in this area and paint over it. So I couldn't just scrub my little heart out. I had to be really delicate and just kind of pat at that line until it was softer and erased it a little bit. So you can see how kind of like a plastic surgeon I went in and kind of rebuilt his face and I tried to keep the changes subtle and soft so it didn't call attention to those changes. Another thing I did was I just kind of softened all those shadows at the base of his nose and just kind of let everything melt in together so the viewer could just look at that area and not really see any delineated shapes and then let their own mind fill in details that needed to be there. I'm just getting those dark shadows between his upper leg and chin really dark just to add some definition to that part of his face. I'm softening the lines underneath his nose and that shadow just to kind of merge all that together. And I'm just using my scrubber again to soften those edges and also um, pull out a few little details in the nose. And at this point, I decided I need to make this whole cat darker. That's the problem. And I felt like this painting wasn't hanging together well for some reason. And the reason is, is because it had one dark cat and two light cats. But what I needed was a dark cat, a light cat, and a medium cat. And so this bottom cat had a lot more medium tones in his coat than what I had put in there at this point. So this is when I realized, I remember making this realization this cat needs to be overall darker everywhere. So I softened, softened his whole coat and I went over with a tea consistency coat of burnt sienna and a little bit of ultramarine blue. In some areas I had more burnt sienna, in some areas I had more ultramarine blue just to 
um, add some variety to the coat colors and give it some depth and some contouring. But I used my Alvaro Casting Net because it's a bigger brush and I was going to work in a bigger area and I was going to keep everything soft and while I was at it I was adding in the really dark shadows that were in the reference photo and I wanted them to be really soft and I liked the idea that this big soft wash was going over these smaller fur details and I thought it really had a nice effect in the end and, and kind of just softened everything nicely and gave his fur a nice velvet look. So if you don't have an Alvaro casting net brush, you can use a mop brush for this area or a nice big size 10 round brush would be fine. Just one of your bigger brushes that holds a lot of water to put on this darker wash if you decide to paint in this way. And again, these darker passages that look blacker are blacker because I put ultra, more ultramarine blue in the mix. The ultramarine blue cools that burnt Santa off till it comes down to a, a more black looking color. And I'm just using my brush to dot a little bit too to give uh, the illusion of a fur texture. And I like to use my fingers sometimes to pull the paint around and spread it and, and give it a nice soft textured look and it it has an interesting effect so play around with that and see if you like it here I'm going in with pure burnt sienna here and there and just putting in some muscle some muscle some muscle contours and you can see how that dried the coat still dried lighter than what it looked like when I was painting it didn't it and that's what watercolor does it looks it dries lighter than what you paint so keep that in mind when you're painting. And here I'm going in with my Simply Simmons brush at the very end of painting this cat's fur and putting in little details where his stomach fur is a lot longer. So I'm just kind of nitpicking about making sure I have those darks really dark. Making sure I have a couple little details in the nose. When you're painting the nostrils, the black area, you might have to do a couple layers to get that area really, really dark because it really helps add some dimension to a face, whether it's a human or a cat or a dog, to get those nose holes really black and dark. And I usually go back over them a second time to really get them really dark. So here I'm using my small stiff scrubber brush to really soften those ears and I use water in my scrubber brush so there's a little bit of moisture in my scrubber brush and a lot of times I'll scrub and then blot. It just depends on what effect I'm trying to get and sometimes I even use my scrubber brush to paint with because it gets really nice soft edges when you paint with it. See how there's a hard line there where I did that really soft wash, that really big wash? Well that left a hard edge along the edge of where my wet water ended and that's a very common problem and what I do is I use a scrubber and I paint over the line so I'm scrubbing both into the background and into the cat to get rid of that hard edge that's created when you had too much water in your first um, wash of clear water. Okay you guys that's it for the chocolate point Siamese. I hope you guys enjoyed that and learned a little bit too about how to manage a commission and in my next video I will be talking about how to paint a lilac point cat. And this cat was a very delicately colored cat, so I'll be talking a lot about how to keep your colors delicate. Thanks, you guys. Leave me a comment, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.